morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day, mathematics. Whoop, whoop. Warm up number 46 is on the screen. Let's see how you do with that. Also, once you're done, make sure you grab at least one or two graph papers. Today's word for the day is graphing. Today we're going to really immerse in a lot of graphing, so uh, make sure you stay on task. All electronic devices put away. Focus, please. Copy and go. All right, help me with number one, please, uh, Diego Rosa. Common denominator. Ten. That is correct. So we distribute the ten all the way. So we end up with uh, 30x over 5 plus 10 over 2 equals 90 over 10 minus 10 over 5x. Simplify, this is 6x plus 5 equals 9 minus 2x. From there, we get all variables to one side, so I add 2x to each side, add 2x. We end up with 8x plus 5 equals 9. Subtract 5 from each side. We end up with 8x equals 4. Let me continue over here on this side. 8x equals 4. Divide by 8. X equals 1 half. Hands if you got that by yourself. Okay, good. Number two, compound inequality. This is an or. So dividing point on the left side is negative 1. This is X. All these numbers are less than or equal to negative 1. This one on this side is 3. This is X. All these numbers compared to 3, 3 is less than or equal to. And like I said, this is an or. So solution set of X such that. There you go. Hands if you got that by yourself. Okay, good. Number three, I'm only going to show you one of the uh, evaluations here. And the domain, they want it from negative one to two. So that means I can do negative one, zero, one, two, from negative one to two. And they want us to find the range, f of x. So negative one, so it's f of negative one equals four. That means this is 5, 6, and 7. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. Graph. We go uh, negative 1, 4. Negative 1, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 5. 5. 1, 6 and 2, 7. And we don't put arrows at the end because the domain just says from negative 1 to 2, and that's where we stop. All right? Hands if you got something like that. Yes? Just be careful with the arrows. Copy the agenda for today. Agenda, warm-up number 46, intro to functions. We're still on the same introductory part. And uh, home play pages 12 through 15, evens only. Make sure you put those pods away. All right, once again, today we don't have a lot of time to be uh, distracted or elsewhere. Today we're going to be doing a lot of graphing. I'm just giving you a heads up. You need a graph paper. You should have gotten at least one or two graph papers by now. All right, so once again, warm-up number 46, enter to functions, pages 12 through 15, evens only. It's on Canvas already. And... Uh, our objective for today, I can identify functions. I can identify functions. Today we're starting with your favorite, aside from graphing. I know graphing is your favorite, but the second favorite is word problems. Let's go. Let's go. Applications. Okay? Copy that. I'll give you some time to set up your Cornell notes. All right. So once again, we are in uh, uh, functions, and today we're moving on to applications. So do we need a fair model for functions? No, by now you should know what functions are, right? All right, tell your neighbor what functions are in your own words, see if they remember. What are functions? Functions. Yeah, very good. They are relations with one-to-one, -one, one input for every output. All right, so we don't need that. So get your big graph paper in front of you. All right, copy this. Example cube, graph f of x equals negative one-half x plus two. 
with domain negative 6 less than or equal to x less than 2, then write the range in the same notation. Copy that. Yes, whenever I say big graph, use the big graph. Okay. All right, here we go. So, we're going to graph f of x equals negative 1 half x plus 2 using a table because they give us a specific domain. So, let me uh, make a table over here. Uh, let's do x. f of x. So what is our domain, guys, from where to where? Negative 6 all the way to what? 2. So let's start with negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. All right, now we're starting and we're getting really immersed uh, from the beginning, and I've been giving you plenty of practice with linear functions. So we've been graphing a lot of lines, yes? Linear functions. Today we're going to continue with linear functions. Now, um, in regards to linear functions, uh, today you're going to see first the work and then the table, but here's the rule of thumb. Ready? Here's the rule of thumb. Now, let me give you a rule of thumb in regards to worldy stuff. Uh, about um, when you see fire, what's the rule of thumb? Yeah, don't put your hand in, right? Now, I know for some of us, for some of you, it took you like maybe five or six tries, right? Some of you got burned a lot. Some of us didn't. Like, we saw it. Oh, stay away from the fire. Rule of thumb for linear functions. Ready? When you show work for three... And if you find a pattern, therefore, you can fill in the rest with a pattern. You don't have to do all the other work. Let me repeat that again. When you show work for only three items and you find a pattern, therefore, fill in the rest with that pattern. So what is the, uh, the opposite? What if you show the work for three and you still haven't gotten the pattern? What do you have to do? Do more of the work. You're going to have to do the, all the work. So if you see the pattern, fill in the pattern. If you don't see the pattern, do all the work. Ready? So here goes the process. Do we know how to evaluate this? Yes. Yeah. So let's start with f of parentheses equals negative 1 half parentheses plus 2. Let's do this one together. What's our first value? Our first value here is negative 6, negative 6. So I'm going to substitute that negative 6, negative 6. And that's an ugly arrow. Better? No? Anyways. So, the left side is only a label. F of negative 6 equals, what is negative times a negative? Positive. What is half of 6? 3 plus 2. So, 3 plus 2 is 5, and it goes right there. Let's do it again. F of equals negative 1 half parentheses plus 2. And my next value is negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, all right? F of negative 5 equals negative times a negative is a positive. What is half of 5? 2.5 plus 2 is 4.5, and that goes right there. Next, F of equals negative 1 half parentheses plus 2. My next value is negative 4. And remember, the left side is only a label. That's why we just rewrite it again. So what is negative times a negative? Po positive. What is half of 4? 2 plus 2. That is 4. All right. So watch. Look at the f of x. We started at 5. We went to the next one and the next one. By now, you should see the pattern. If you see it, fill in the rest. If you don't see it, you're going to have to show the work. So, yes? Yes. 
So you start at positive 2? Okay. Okay. Right. So that's going to work. The only thing is that when you get to the negative side for some of them, uh, it's going to be hard to see with half the half. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tell your neighbor what the pattern is so that we can ask uh, Alyssa. So she's going to help us with the rest. All right, what is the pattern, Alyssa? Go down a half, so the next one is M. M, one. Hands, have you got that? Yeah, and that's how it's gonna go with linears, guys. Show me the work for three. If you see the pattern, fill in the rest. If you don't see the pattern, I wanna see the work, okay? Don't just turn and copy someone else. All right? So with that said, look up. Let's understand what we're looking at. Look at the domain. Negative 6. Is negative 6 included? Look at it. Yes. How about 2? No, it's not included. So we're going to put an asterisk so like that we know what to do when we get there. Yes? So let's start plotting. Negative 6, 5. Negative 6, 5 is up here. Negative 5, 4.5. Negative 4, 4. Negative 3, 3.5. Negative 2, 3. Negative 1, 2.5. 0, 2. Let me erase that. Uh, 1, 1 1.5. 2, 1. Tell your neighbor what I'm going to do there at 2, 1. Talk it over to your neighbor. What am I going to do at 2, 1? 2, 1. I think Jaden's got it. All right. Jaden, what am I going to do at 2, 1? Yes, plot a point. Okay, good. Uh, help him out, Jose. What kind of point? Open circle, Open circle yes. There it is. And connect all the points from the previous one to that one. There it is. Yes? No, no, no. Ask the question. Right. So that's why we need to go back to our domain. This one doesn't have an equal sign. That's why we put an asterisk so that when we get there, we just do an open point. All right. So did we graph our function? Yes, now we need the domain and range in the same notation. Before I move on though, what kind of notation is this? Tell your neighbor, what do we call that notation? Joel, what do we call that notation? Inequality, hands if you uh, got inequality, yes? And of course after that is set notation and the last one is interval. So right now we need to get this notation for the range. So we start from the bottom to the top. Get your highlighter. From the bottom to the top, what is the lowest point on the Y that we're going to go? At 1. And we're going to stop at what? 5, Mr. Q. All right, good. Let's stop at 5. So we went from 1 all the way to 5. So let's write our range. Range. from 1 to 5, 1 to 5. What goes in between, guys, for the range? Fredo, what goes in between? What is it? For the range. Y, but now instead of Y, what do we have? F of X, that is correct. Arrows to the left. Start at 1. Follow 1 to the graph. Is 1 included? No, it's an open point, so we leave it like that. How about 5? Is 5 included? Yes, it's a solid point, so we put a what? Equal sign. 
All right, for practice, we put, uh, write our set notation, solution set of f of x, such that 1 less than f of x, less than or equal to 5. And I want you to write me the interval notation. Write the interval notation for that one, please. All right, show you never what you got for your interval so I can get uh, Jessica to help us. Interval notation. All right, Jessica, go. Parentheses, one, comma, five. Bracket. Hands, if you got that? That is correct. Let's go. From one to five, how comfortable are you with these? Yeah, we got it, right? All right. Go to the medium graph in the back. Copy this one. Bam. Let's go. Let's go. Let me give you some reference points so you can do the curve nice and neat. Do a negative five, eight, negative three, seven, negative one, four, zero, zero. 1, negative 4, and 4, negative 7. Put arrows at the end once you finish. I'll give you some time. Copy that. All right, so let's see what they're asking us to do. Write the domain and range of the function. So let's start with that part. Here's a function given. We need the domain and range. Let's start with the domain. I'm going to get my highlighter. I'm going to use yellow to start with, and I'm going from left to right. What's the farthest point on the left that I'm going to start at? I'm going to start at negative... Six? Yes? What's the farthest point to the right that I'm going to stop at? According to my graph, Valente, what's the farthest point on the x to the left? No. Uh, to the left, yes, negative six. How about to the right? Uh, five. five. I'll do five and a half. How about that? All right. And I can highlight all this, but I'm not. I'm just showing you where, from where to where. Yes? Question. So that would be from negative 6 to about 5.5. However, tell your neighbor what this means. What does this and this mean? What does that mean? All right, so from the left side, what do I write, Julian? Bless. What is it? No, no, no. Uh, what, where am I headed in that direction? Do I stop at negative 6? Negative infinity, yes. How about to the right? Positive infinity. All right, so let's write it in, uh, let's do interval notation for the domain. Yes, domain. Negative infinity, positive infinity. Do we ever catch up to infinity? So therefore it's what? Paren and paren, yes? All right. Let's go to the range. Range. I'm going to switch colors, so I'm going to use uh, pink. Now I'm going from the bottom to the top. Lowest point on the bottom on the Y is about 7, 7.5. What is the highest point? The highest point it looks like it's about 8, 8.5. However, once again, tell you never what the arrows mean. What do the arrows mean for the range? Down here, we're going to keep going to what, Anissa? Oh, uh, one, down here. We're going to keep going to what? On the range? Negative infinity. How about up here? Positive infinity. So my range is negative infinity. Positive infinity, parentheses, and parentheses. Yes? All right, so we have an arrow that is going to continue making our graph go in that direction. Yes? But notice slowly it keeps going up, right? So eventually I'm going to have to continue highlighting upward more. Yeah. So it continues going to the positive infinity. Same thing down here. It's going to continue 
going in the negative direction, so negative infinity. Yeah. Uh, there's going to come some of the functions that we're going to see this year. Some do flatten out and we get close to, and we never get to a certain place, and we'll get to those pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have fun with those. <laughs> All right. So we're done with graphing and writing the domain and range. Okay. Next, it says, then graph the portion of the function for the domain of negative 2 to 3. Now, guys, this is, pay attention to this part. This is foundational for pre-calculus and calculus. In calculus, they're going to ask you to look at a certain part of the graph and find the area under the curve or above the curve and such like that. This is foundational for that. So I want you to look at our graph, but I want you to focus right now your eyes between negative 2 of x to 3 of x. Are you there? Okay, now imagine that you highlight up and down. Do you see that section? All right, so I'm going to switch colors, switch uh, highlighter colors if you, if you have. I'm going to switch to uh, green. So I'm going to go to negative 2 of x. Negative 2 is right here, so I'm going to go straight up and down. And I'm going to end at positive 3 of x. Positive 3 of x is over here. Do you see the section of the graph only from there to there? If you don't see it, let me highlight it so you guys can see it. From here to there. So who can give me the initial point of that graph over here and the bottom point over here? Let's see. Talk it over to your neighbor. What would be the initial point up here and the bottom point right here of this section? That section. Talk it over to your neighbor, please. All right. I think Jaden's got it. Jaden, what's the uh, top point? Negative two seven is up here. It's a little bit off. What? It's not on the graph. Help them out, Jalen. Negative 2, 6. Hands, if you agree with that. Yes, there it is. I'm going to change that to green so you guys can see it, that it's uh, our initial point there. The other one that we're going to use is 0, 0. And can you give me the bottom uh, point? Um, Frida. 3, negative 6. about 6.5. Yeah, 3 negative 6.5, which is right there. So on the little graph, on the little coordinate plane that you have on the side, graph that little section, please. Kind of like if you're zooming in or something like that. This is x. This is f of x. Is that crooked? Or is it good? Yeah. It's a little, okay. All right. So negative 2, 6. We got 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we got 1, 2. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 2, 6 is right there. 0, 0. And I got 3. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, point 5, which is about right there. Is this this section? Yeah. All right. But now they want the what of the new graph? Range. So tell your neighbor what the range is in uh, interval notation for this new section. What is the uh, range? What? Range. All 
All right. I think Jaden's got it. Very good, Jaden. All right. But Alyssa's got it. Alyssa, what'd you get? Interval notation for the range for that section. Negative 6.5, comma, 6, brackets. Hands, have you got that? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we got plenty of practice already with domain and range for this, right? So how comfortable are you if just looking at a section of a graph, yeah, from one side, five, four, five, yeah, we, we're getting there, okay? All right, so we've seen uh, so far, let's see, the previous example was to graph a linear equation, but only a certain section using the domain. Then we are given a function, and they ask us to graph a certain section according to the domain, all right? So now we're going to the third different type of graph, copy this one. Like I said, we're going to stick to linear functions, linear functions. So on your other graph paper, copy this. I'm going to give you two points. I'm going to give you the point negative 2, negative 6, and 4, 6. And I want you to graph your line going straight through those points. Use like uh, the edge of your paper or something so it can be straight because I wanted to... Uh, we're going to be looking for the slope, okay? Let's put arrows at the end. All right, so it says, write the equation of the function. Well, we've been graphing using equations, is that correct? Linear, linear uh, or lines, yes. What equation did I use to graph a line? Who remembers? Y equals what? Mx plus B, we need to start there. And we know that the M stands for slope. And the plus B is our y-intercept, our y-intercept, or where our line crosses the y-axis. However, now instead of y, we are now in what? Function notation. So we're going to change that. F of x instead of y, bring down the x, and now we just need to find our slope and our y-intercept. So look at that line. Tell your neighbor by looking at it what the y-intercept is, please. What is our y-intercept? Tell your neighbor, please. Y-intercept. Uh, Delilah, go. Uh, y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. Negative 2. Hands, have you got that? Yeah, so let's write here negative 2 instead of the plus b. There it is. Okay. Next, we need the slope, or in other words, we need the right over the run. Tell you never what we need in order to find the, the rise over the run. We need at least how many points? Two. So pick two points, find the rise over the run. All right. So let's see. Uh, help me out, please. JP, which points do you want me to use? Uh, negative, one and four. negative one and negative four. Negative one, negative four, okay. And what other? Um, negative one, two, and zero. Negative two and zero is right. Zero and negative two. Right zero, there. negative two. Okay, so these two. Uh -huh. So we're going in which direction? Up. How many steps? One, two, three. two steps up. And then one to the right. So my rise is 2, 1 to the right, so my slope is 2. Hands, have you got that? Yeah, it doesn't matter which two points you pick, you should have gotten the same thing in simplified form. Okay? From 1 to 5, I'll come through. Are you writing equations from graphs? Okay? I'm going to give you another uh, two points that we can uh, use that same graph. 
So like that we can find uh, the function for this graph. Let's do um, negative one six and um, one three. One negative three. One negative three. Graph your line through those two points. To write our function, we write f of x equals blank x. So, before we get started, look at it. Tell your neighbor what the y-intercept is. What is our y-intercept? Our y-intercept. What do you think, um, what are we called on? Did I call on Fredo already? Yeah, yeah. pass someone, Fredo. Uh, Joe. Joe. What is it? Two? Yeah, it's pretty close, so I'll just put plus two, okay. So with that said, uh, which two points do you want to use to uh, get our slope? Uh, how about Diego Rosas? What two points? Uh, no, which two points of this line do you want to use to find the slope? Zero two, uh huh. And six. Okay, so from here to here, so that means we go one, two, three, four down. So how do we write that, guys? Negative four over. How many steps to the right? One, so my slope is negative four or negative four over one. Okay. From one to five, how comfortable are you? Yeah, we got this, yes? All right, so enough of the, uh, of the graphing portion for right now. How about we get into some word problems? Let's go, let's go, let's go. But before we do, uh, believe it or not, guys, have you guys checked out my posters as you walk into the class? Did anybody notice that in, in the front of the classroom, I have a uh, strategy for word problems up here? Yeah, some of you? Okay, we're gonna be using that today. So copy this on your Cornell notes. On your Cornell notes, write this down. Problem solving strategy. This is known as a cubed, cubed strategy, which stands for number one, circle important numbers in blue. In red, underline the question or questions. Three in green, box important terms or idea. Four, I did that in gray so you can use your pencil, exclude unnecessary information. And in black, number five, draw pictures, diagrams, tables, and labels, etc. Now you copy that. As you're copying that, I'm going to write the acronym at the top so that you remember how to do this. I start with a circle. Inside the circle, I put the letter C, which means circle. And what do we circle? Numbers, important numbers. Next, in red, I write the letter U with an underline. Why? Because we underline. What do we underline, Mr. Q? We underline questions. Three with green, box. I put the letter B in a box to remind me to box important terms or ideas. Four, E. Look what I do with E. I actually cross it out to remind me that I exclude unnecessary information. 
And at the end, the letter D, I draw a little scribble underneath to remind me that I draw pictures or diagrams. I'll give you time to copy that. Copy and go. All right. For the sake of time, uh, I'm going to move on. But once again, if you want to finish uh, copying the steps, they're on in the front. I'll leave them up there. They've been up there all year. So uh, we're going to be using this acronym to uh, get a word problem started. Okay. So here's a word problem. Copy this. Example Q. Mega Q. It reads. Mr. Q runs at a rate of 3 feet per second. He runs for 30 seconds. Then instructions, write a function and domain, graph, and state the range. So copy that, and then copy a little uh, quadrant on the side, and then we'll use that uh, terminology, the, the acronym Q, so we can see how it works using this word problem. Okay? Copy that, please, on your Cornell notes. All right, here we go. So it says, Mr. Q runs at a rate of 3 feet per second. He runs for 30 seconds. So let's start with the letter C, which stands for circle important numbers. What are my important numbers here? 3 feet per second, so I'm going to circle that. And the 30 seconds at the end. Okay, I did that in blue. In red, underline what they're asking us to do or the question. What are they asking us to do? Writing function, that's one. I'm going to go underneath to graph, which is 2. And then the last thing is to find the domain and range. So that's three things that they're asking us to do. Uh, in green, box important terms. What's important? Rate, second. That's important. Now, a rule of thumb, guys, when you're dealing with uh, rate problems, from now on, the x-axis will always be our time, our time, whether it's in seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, and so on and so forth. In this case, it's what? Seconds. Question. I start from zero and I go out of the way how many seconds, guys? 30. So over here I label it 30. What increments do you want to go with? 1, 5, 10, what? 5, okay, so we do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that means our y or our f of x is going to be the, uh, let's see, we have seconds, and right here we have also what? Feet. So this is our distance. Distance. And distance is in feet. So before I scale it, let's think it through. In one second, I run three feet. How about in 10 seconds? Thirty feet, right? In one second, it's three feet, and ten seconds, it's what? Thirty. How about twenty seconds? Sixty. How about thirty seconds? Ninety. So that means I need to be up here at ninety. So you want to scale this by what? What do you want to do? By tens, twenties, thirties, what? Tens. Okay. So let's do uh, ten. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I ran out of space. <laughs> Not properly scaled. So, All right. So let's plot our points before we get on into our equation. I'm at 0, 0. Okay. So let's go to 5 seconds. In 5 seconds, where am I at? What is it? If I'm running at three feet per second, in five seconds I'm at 15. So let's plot a point at 515. So that means 10 is 30. Uh, I'm going to go to 20 now. 
In 20, it's what? 60, which is somewhere over here. And I'm going to go to the last one. 30 is 90, which is way over here. All right, so let's connect those. All right. So we have a line. Do we know how to write a function using that line? Yes. F of x equals blank x. So that means we need a slope. Yes. And we need a y-intercept. Tell your neighbor the y-intercept of that line segment right there. What is our y-intercept? Alyssa, go. Zero plus zero. Okay. What is our slope? We need to pick two points. Tell your neighbor which points you're going to pick to find the slope. Alright, so some of us want to start at 0, 0, so I'm going to start at 0, 0, and what other point shall we use, Dylan? 515, okay, so that means the rise, according to uh, this point, is what, 15, and the run is what, guys, 5, can we simplify this, 3, so my slope is 3. So my new function, if I simplify it, is f of x equals 3x. All right, so we're done with the function. We're done with the graph. Now we need domain and range. Let's do uh, interval notation. Let's do domain and range. So look at the domain. The x value is from where to where. Tell your neighbor from where to where. Are we going to use the domain from where to where? Diego, Roma, go. From where to where? Domain. Zero to what? 30. Yes, that is correct. Zero comma 30. Are, are both ends included? Yes. Bracket and bracket. So tell your neighbor, guys, the range. From where to where are we going to use the range? From where to where? Yeah? Goose it. From where to where? Zero to 90. And of course, they are included. There you go. From one to five, how comfortable are you with these? Yeah, five, five, fours. So now you're going to have some of these, but you're also going to have a lot of the other ones where you find the domain and range of graphs, write it in different notations and such. And reminder, uh, tutoring after school, be there or be elsewhere. And also reminder, so that it's recorded on the video, uh, grades are going out next week. So make sure some of you that are uh, lagging a little bit with some of your stuff, let's turn it in, please. All right, I'll stop the video right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Q. You're welcome.